Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Today we're taking a beef to the butcher. Now usually we take two-year-old steers to the butcher, but today we're taking a five-year-old cow named Rose. Unfortunately, Rose didn't have a calf last summer, and in order to stay on the farm, cows need to be productive. This is Rose's story. Rose was born in April 2014, and she, her mom, and her grandmother, who was bred at the time, came to our farm about a month later. They were our first three Dexters, and they were the first cattle on the farm since my dad had raised Semitols, ending in about 1987, and the land had been leased after that. Soon after those three Dexters arrived on our farm, we had a fourth. The grandmother, Greta, had a bull calf named Flynn, so Rose had a playmate. I'm going to tell you Rose's story as we load her to go to the butcher. Loading's just about a full morning's work between positioning the trailer, getting her on it, and jockeying cattle and equipment around to finally get the trailer hooked up to the truck. Then there's a trip to the butcher, getting her into the right pen there, and driving back. And finally, the trailer needs to be put away and the cattle resettled in the barn. Yep, everything's a mess. It's been freezing every night and thawing every day. This is the first pasture that those four head were in. And uh, there was enough room for them. They had to keep out of the way of the chicken boxes which were moving around in the same field at that time. Summer went on and Rose grew well and it was time to have her mother and her grandmother bred again. So we called the artificial inseminator and he came and bred them. We didn't see any more heats so we thought they were pregnant but no calves came in 2015. We were still stuck at two cows, one heifer, Rose, and one steer who is going to the butcher in a year. Artificial insemination didn't seem to be working, and we weren't seeing the cows go into heat. We even put a wireless video camera up in this tree so that we could watch the cows for heat when we were in the house, but we still didn't see anything. Come on, lady. Come on. There you go. Cattle are usually easy to load. I just throw some hay in the trailer and let them take their time going in. Pigs are a different story, but that's a subject for another video. nature's paper towel. Clearly, artificial insemination wasn't working for us, so we bought our first bull, Titus. Also in 2015, we bought two more cows and two calves from a large Dexter farm four hours west of our place. Titus went right to work. He was an excellent heat detector. And in 2016, Rose and the two cows we had bought the year before had calves. But the original two cows, Rose's mom and grandmother, didn't have calves. One was acting more like a bull than a cow. We didn't know what was up, so it was time to call the Cornell vets. The Cornell vets came and they did ultrasounds, 
and they said that both of these cows had pyometra, which is an infection of the uterus. It's usually caused by the cow not cleaning after birth, after calving, and the remaining causes an infection. One was too far advanced to treat. This was Rose's grandmother. So we scheduled her for the butcher. The infection in Rose's mom, Wheela, wasn't as bad. So the Cornell vets gave her two doses of oxytocin to force a cycle to help clean out her uterus. And we hoped that maybe she could be bred again. Time passed and she still didn't get pregnant. So eventually she went to the butcher too. Meanwhile, through all of this, Rose was doing great. In 2016, 2017, and 2018, she had calves. She was a nice looking cow, she had really nice horns, and she was a good mother and had a good temperament. With Titus on the farm and a second bull, Orden, added a year later, our herd began to rapidly expand. We had more and more calves every year. With this expansion, the role of herd boss became more important. Herd boss is the lead cow, the lead female cow. And her job is to be at the top of the pecking order, to know how to guide the herd, like when I call the cows to new pasture. And one of the perks is she gets the choice of the hay in the wintertime. Greta, Rose's grandmother, became our first herd boss. When Greta left, Rose's mother, Wheela, became the next herd boss. When Wheela left, because after the Cornell vets did all that work, Wheela still couldn't get pregnant, and Wheela went to the butcher, then Rose was assumed to be the next boss. Like all our equipment, our livestock trailer is old. It was made in 1973. I paid $1,200 for it and it's built like a tank. It paid for itself quickly in hauling fees. And on top of that, it saves us the stress of having to be ready to load animals according to the hauler's schedule. And it makes it much easier to load pigs because we can park it on the pen line a week before they're due at the butcher and feed them out of the trailer. Then on butcher day, we just close the doors while the pigs are inside eating and off we go. We assumed that Rose was the next in line to be boss cow. She had a big nice set of horns while a lot of our cattle don't have any horns at all. And she was a pretty big animal and she was the oldest on the farm. She'd been there the longest so we just assumed she would take the position. But Rose was challenged by Patty, a younger cow with stubbier horns. The two fought it out over the course of a couple of days and they were both exhausted by the time it was over. But Patty was the victor and Patty became our new boss cow. Rose would challenge her a few times in the months after that, but Patty always won. Rose was never the same after that. She became sort of bullishly grumpy, pawing at the ground a lot. She kept to herself a lot. She still ran with the alpha group of cattle, but she began to remind us more of her grandmother and mother's behavior when they couldn't breed anymore. Then, in 2019, Rose didn't have a calf. We'd seen her being bred the year before and we had a due date for a calf, but no calf came. So we called our AI guy to come and pregnancy check her. He found that she was 90 days pregnant and we were relieved. But a month later, we saw Rose being bred again in the pasture and at first we assumed that she had aborted her calf. And then we got to thinking about it further and wondered if maybe what the breeder had felt was actually an inflammation in the uterus that seemed like a calf, because at three months a calf is only about this long. As we began to connect the dots, we realized that um, Rose's mother and her grandmother had s exhibited the same symptoms that Rose had been exhibiting for the past months. They acted like bulls, they were hard to breed, they aborted quite a few times, and we began to wonder if maybe Rose hadn't inherited a trait from her mother and grandmother that resulted in her not cleaning all the way after calving and that this resulted in a greater um, chance of her getting pyometra. So we had to make a tough decision. Should we call the Cornell vets, have her checked out, or should we just cut our losses and schedule her for the butcher? Even though Rose was a proven good mother, we felt that these breeding problems would just continue, mostly based on her lineage. 
So we decided to send Rose to the butcher. I'm sorry, Rose. I'm sorry. Here we are coming back to the farm. I don't think I've ever shown this view in a video before. We're lucky to have a USDA butcher that's only a 20 minute drive from the farm, especially considering two trips are required for beef. One to bring the animal and one to pick up the meat. Pigs take one extra trip. We pick up the fresh cuts first and then have to pick up the smoke cuts a few weeks later. We dropped Rose off at the butcher and I backed the tractor and trailer up to load the last of our field pigs next week. And then we'll be done loading out animals for the year. It's always a sad day when we have to take a cow to the butcher because they've been around the farm so long and we get to know them so well. But it's a necessity. In order to stay profitable, our farm has to stay productive. And that means the animals need to pull their weight and Rose wasn't anymore, so we had to let her go. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a good day and I'll see you next time.